In the entire history of the release of the Nissan Pathfinder R51, it had only three engines, a petrol 6 4.0, 269 horsepower, 385 N.M, and two diesel engines, a 4 174 horsepower, later, 190 horsepower, 450 N.M, and V6, 231 horsepower, 550 N.M. For the last two motors, there is practically no negative information. The first is very reliable, and the second is still too young. Rare problems with the turbine, particulate filter and injectors do not count. Timely care and proven refills, that's all you need for trouble-free operation. But the gasoline colleague gave a surprise, only one, but what? Due to low-quality fuel in the exhaust system, catalysts were destroyed, ceramic dust from which fell into the cylinders and worked there as an abrasive. I think it would be superfluous to talk about the catastrophic consequences caused by this incident. Apparently, it was precisely such cases during the warranty period that forced the Nissan authorities in 2010 to stop supplying SUVs with this engine to our country. By the way, it is worth noting that such a disease occurs on gasoline engines of the brand, both in younger models and in representatives of the Infinity Diaspora. Transmission Things are different with the gearbox six-speed mechanics really has no weak points. The new seven-band automatic, in general, is performing well so far. However, it annoys some owners with its behavior under the throttle. But the previous five-speed automatic transmission works very adequately in any conditions, but sometimes an unpleasant story happens to it. The partitions in the radiator are destroyed, separating the cooling circuits of the box and the engine. If the resulting leak is not noticed in time, then it will be possible to say goodbye to the automatic. The second-generation Nissan Pathfinder is equipped with an all-mode 4x4 automatic all-wheel drive system. Everything would be fine, but many owners simply did not know that it did not provide for a center differential and drove all-wheel drive all year round at considerable speeds. And, despite the fact that the manufacturer allows the operation of a car with a blocked center, at speeds up to 100 km h some especially zealous riders still manage to destroy the transfer case. And although this is rather an exception to the rule, it is necessary to check the all-wheel drive system before buying. Another interesting and even funny moment was that the Pathfinder sometimes refused to move out of the downshift mode. You will laugh, but the reason that caused such an incident remained a secret, and the most effective method of treating the disease turned out to be. Russian Matt. Many owners, having expressed everything they think about their car, switched, as if nothing had happened, to normal mode and calmly returned home. Of course, the Russian language is great, but the secret here is most likely in the electronics, which monitored some processes and, after they were stopped, made it possible to manipulate the transfer case. This review of the transmission could have ended, but one cannot fail to mention the rear gearbox, which used to collapse right on the go and wedge the rear axle. It is probably impossible to describe in words the state of those single, lucky ones who find themselves in a similar situation. However, there are two important points here. The differential does not fail in an instant. It reminds of itself for a long time and persistently with increased backlashes and shocks when starting off. After restyling in 2010, no such cases were registered. Suspension The Nissan Pathfinder uses a very interesting design, consisting of a powerful steel frame auto part-time all-wheel drive and fully independent suspensions, designed to improve the handling of a heavy machine. The behavior of a two-ton car on the road is indeed surprising, but it came at a price. Firstly, these are frequent trips to dismantling slash collapse, and secondly, this is the periodic replacement of small, but extremely important components, such as ball joints. However, this detail can only be called a trifle conditionally, since it is only supplied complete with the lever. Even a solid service life of 10 to 100,000 kilometers does not save you from increased costs. Some independent firms offer to change the support separately, by pressing out, but such an event looks very doubtful. By the 100,000th milestone, universal joints, hubs of both axles, shock absorbers, and brake discs will also be asked to landfill. The pads will go out of life much earlier, 40 to 60,000 kilometers. Future owners should keep in mind that if the drive shaft crosses and hubs, especially the rear ones, are not changed in time, the car will eventually turn into a vibrating stool, which only those who used to ride a horse-drawn cart on a broken pavement will be able to ride. Also, do not delay with the knocks that have appeared in the steering rack, it does not differ in any significant resource. 
Moreover, some owners sharpened their teeth after the first kilometers from the car dealership. Everything that was listed above can hardly be called ordinary phenomena. Most of the faults described earlier are the exception rather than the rule. And now it's time to highlight those moments that poison the lives of most Nissan Pathfinder owners. This list includes both minor dirty tricks and very unpleasant breakdowns. The first ones include failures in the CD changer, elusive crickets in the cabin, glitches in the air conditioning system, failures of the electric mirrors, incorrect operation of the washer nozzles. The parade of little things is closed by plastic plugs and letters falling off the roof rails. The more significant problems, first of all, include poor heat and noise insulation of the roof. A banal attempt by the designers to save money led to the fact that the condensate accumulated under the passengers' heads settled in the ceiling lights and in the area of the sun visors. Such cases were recognized by the manufacturer as warranty, and the owners who turned to the dealer received a full roof sizing. The second unpleasant moment was the fuel level sensor. About 100,000 kilometers, he began to give false readings, and his replacement is possible only when assembled with the pump. However, some drivers are indifferent to this and continue to drive, focusing on the average consumption and distance traveled. 